from from Seattle is British Columbia and Canada. He knows it well, and he knows the yep, whole issue yep. of the student yep. loan issue. Our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield joins us. MTC, we found you, my friend. How are you? Hey, we can... yeah. I tell you, man, you are the best. With with your own intro, hey, right. nobody else could do hey, it. An, an undisclosed location. Somewhere near the Space Needle, surrounded by guitars. <laughs> hey, I want to thank everybody that showed up at the Nectar. I just did a performance at the Nectar, and those people are amazing. It's one of the best places in Seattle to go. All the great musicians around town show up, and they go there to support a local feature band, but then there's all this jamming that goes on afterwards where bands get up on stage and they play with each other. Maybe awesome. members of bands who have never played with other members of the other bands and people from the, they call people up from the audience and say, hey, come up here, Mark, and play electric guitar, do a song for us. And it's great. We've had Eva Walker there from the Black Tones. We've had Aaron wow. Jones, I believe, who's uh, opening for the Rolling Stones on their world tours. Nice. Um, and so thank you for everybody that showed up there. That's what makes Seattle so beautiful and why I love it so much. And I'm just uh, um, yeah. we gotta get that profoundly to you, man. <laughs> thankful. So you can check out that video actually at YouTube. I'm going to put it up. But I wanted to let you know, Jeff, I am wearing a tie. So this is not a, a casual Friday for me. This is actually like we were doing a music <laughs> video. So I had to wear yeah. a All black right. tie. So it's kind of hard to see. But I am dressed up. Well, and we can see you. Last so, week you had on sunglasses. So we didn't get a chance to see your... Uh, what's that? That's a much smaller this guitar. This is one of the kind of guitar that I had to buy from somebody online who had it and it's as you can see you can see through it it's acrylic yeah. and you can actually like put lights on it and then it'll flash and play uh wow. but it's tiny it's like comparison very tiny i was going to say it's not it's like size that i was playing right. right and look at the size of this <laughs> yeah. so talk about it's mini basically me. like it's tiny and but the net the head on it up here is about the same size as a regular electric guitar so it doesn't feel strange necessarily when you play it it just has a very small body and it's very super yeah. light so for people who don't want to get that huge overdeveloped muscle that um pe people like the uh, rick keith richards with the rolling stones has for carrying that electric guitar around his whole life um you can get something like this which is really well actually you probably can't find this now because they might probably are not available but how much this is my mini for? guitar what, oh what well something like for? this uh, I have no idea because there, there's like none out there on the market. Yeah. So you can't really buy them. It's a collector's item. It's like, you know, I would have to, I could set a price, but it would not be a retail price. And that's because I had to do a bunch of research online to even find that this existed. And it's made by Harmony, which has actually been around since like 1895. So it's not like some brand new, strange thing, you know, knockoff guitar or something. And it actually plays. I took it to my friend Ernie's uh, New Year's Eve party. Or Christmas party, and I played it through his really nice Fender amp, and it sounded great, you know, for this tiny little guitar. So, I particularly well, you know, just I mean, just me don't like heavy guitars when I'm on stage. I like to well, be able to jump around. And I mean, you know, you know, yeah. If you don't want to jump around, you don't want to guy. kill yourself in the process. Even hey, Walker we're talking with the MTC the here Walker on the Jeff plays. Santo show, and uh, we'll get we'll get back, uh, even though we're we're running out of uh, time already, but. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you because, you know, this has been an issue all day and I know you wanted to get your thoughts in about the student loan situation. And, uh, you know, and yesterday or two days ago, Biden uh, going ahead and, you know, uh, basically uh, forgiving 10,000 student loan and 20,000 with Pell Grants. You know, there have been a lot of discussions. We've heard the the Clinton crowd, uh, you know, pr predominantly people like Larry Summers, their former economic czar and so forth saying oh it's going to create inflation and you know it's just uh, awful and you know why are we doing this and you know and then others are are saying that what about the people who uh you know 40 years ago paid back their loans and wh why can't they get help and, and i'm like you know he's done he's done the right thing you know and i've been critical of, of president biden uh you know through through the year and a half or that he's been president and so forth but look i mean he's at least done what bernie sanders and many people you have on the show, like Alex Lawson and others, of Social Security Works, have been fighting for. And yeah, it wasn't everything. You know, it, it wasn't 
you know, opening the door to forgiveness of all loans. Yes, it wasn't the idea that he had talked about in the campaign Biden did of free community college. So we're not there yet, but we're started the fire and, you know, and maybe we can build on it. So I, I don't want to see, you know, people who I respect and, 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 and really like, you know, whether they're callers or guests of the show, you know, trash and Biden, because frankly, a lot of our progressive friends, including your Congresswoman Jayapal did a lot of great work in getting at the very least, you know, the, the start of this, no, nowhere near finish. And I think the the pressure has to continue on. I mean, we got to continue to put the pressure on Biden and continue to protect Ron Klain, who's, who's surrounded by Clinton Easter crowds, you know, off the San Anista of the 1980s, you know, and, and this is where we got to really keep, again, protecting somebody like Klain. It was just on MSNBC about half an hour ago, you know, from, from all of these, these corporate Democrats that, you know, want no part of a, of a, a Jaya Paul, no part of a salon. I mean, they, they, they see she's a heretic, you know, I mean, and, and that's where we need to move this agenda. Your thoughts on, on all of this. Well, I thought that there was a pretty concerted, if, if not completely organized, but, you know, a concerted effort on Twitter and other social networking platforms and a lot of rallies around the country, including in your part of the world, where people were getting together and talking about this issue as the student debt crisis, and that was the hashtag. So we're not talking about something that just happened yesterday or hasn't been a big drag on the economy for many years. I know a woman, a very good friend of mine from childhood, his wife is a public school teacher in Washington State. She just paid off her student loan at the age of 60 years old as a public school teacher. So there's sort of something wrong with that picture. We should be rewarding our educators as well as students who take the time to study and do the work that it takes to get a degree, whether it's a graduate degree or a bachelor's degree. So as you know, executive director at Democracy Watch News, it's very important that I approach this from a pro-democracy point of view, which is that if you don't have an educated population, and you know, Thomas Jefferson talked about this, but uh, yep. if, if nothing else, and we talked about this on the Tom Hartman show earlier today, if nothing else, the recent uh, misinformation that's run rampant that caused things like the January 6th uprising and the, the misinformation out there about the election, uh, if that's any indication at all, then we really seriously as a culture need to value education, make sure that people are educated, that they're informed voters and they know what they're talking about uh, because without it, you see the results. And so I stand We're for... Sure. A cancellation of all debts, along with Joe Sandberg and Ro Khanna, another Congress uh, person. My representative and friend from Village Ipaul has been saying this for a long time. We need free uh, college education. Now, I'm not asking people to eliminate their private universities and technical colleges or whatever. I'm just saying that the state run colleges should be funded. And, you know, they ask me, well, where's the money going to come from? I say, how about, you know, like one major defense budget project? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of money that's out there. It's yeah, going I mean, we, to we, different. See, we have spent sixty percent, Mark, sixty percent of uh, non-discretionary dollars in our budget every year on the military. Yeah. And I'm not saying conflict. eliminate the military or anything like that. I'm just saying, no, hey, no, of you course know, not. one major billion I mean, you know, why, dollar. Why do we have to have bake oh. sales for educators? You know, I mean, really, I mean, why are our teachers yeah, today, to you know, taking straight, out of their own pocketbooks and, what are we and wallets money for the kids? Yeah, if we're going to spend all that defense money to protect our interests around the world, well, what what are those interests? What are the things that we're trying to protect? And one of those is freedom of education. And I do believe that it should be part of sort of an economic and educational uh, vocational bill of rights, you know, add it to Harvey Kay and Ellen Minsky's bill of rights. I think these things are all important. Raising the minimum wage is so important. If you want to eliminate some of the mass homelessness that we see, especially in places like Oakland, California and other cities, then, you know, let's stop. Uh, the the raids on uh, the mortgage raise on people's uh, income. Let's stop the the rents going through the roof. Let's get some rent control. Let's have some reasonable rent control. Let's have some reasonable affordable housing in this country. In Washington State, we have I-135, which has been um, uh, just was endorsed by my district Democrat Democratic Party, the 43rd district, and they are calling for, and this is through Frank Chop through the state legislature, are calling for funding for social housing. They just want to have permanent housing for people that's not, yeah, you can't jack up the rents, um, that there are limitations on, you know, what you can charge people so that they have 
economic security for the rest of their lives so they don't have to worry about living in a high rise in Seattle for 30 years retiring and then finding out that they're doubling the rent and so you have to move. I mean, just crazy things like that. So I think Let me ask free education you, is, and counseling student debt could really help the younger generation. And if the Democrats or any other party wants to reach out to the younger generation, hit them with a Green New Deal and climate action and free college education and cancellation of student debts. And you have a lot of voters that are going to support you right there. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, if you look, you got 29% of a poll and maybe it's up to 40 now or 35 anyways uh, for Biden. But 29 percent was the number of people who approve of Joe Biden age 18 to 34. You cannot win the hearts and minds of people with that number. So you, you, are you doing more? You know, you, you passed in, in the environmental parts of the IRA and now you passed this uh, the student loan, but it's limited. And if you don't come out and t- say, hey, we hear you. You know, I've always said he has a granddaughter who's an educator, a teacher. Bring her out. And, you know, the example is my granddaughter right here, whenever she's 25, 30 years old, whatever the case may be. And, and that's, that's, that's what you need. And, you know, I'm hoping uh, our friends, Mr. Clean and others, who I give a lot of respect for hanging in there, you know, because, frankly, you know, it, it's a lot of incoming, particularly, <laughs> Mark, I mean, you're in a small studio, so am I. I mean, if you can imagine, you know, somebody like Bruce Reed, who's the antithesis politically of Ron Klain, a Clinton guy, wants to cut anti-union, you know, he's next door. I mean, you know, you knock on the knock on the side of the wall, you know, to where to Mr. Klain is. It's the deputy director, deputy chief of staff, I should say, is Reed. I mean, uh, talk about, you know, being surrounded by wolves, you know. So that's why yeah. I give Biden and, and, and those guys credit. Um, hey, hey, I, I want to bring in. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say quickly, a, a good example of how things can change is that um, uh, formula E racing. Most of the, the new generation three cars that are coming out for next year are made of recycled material. They're all very uh, eco friendly. They use electric motors. There's absolutely no carbon emissions at all. So. That's and the, you know and they're the racing industry uh, through the FIA have actually committed to eliminating uh, all carbon footprint by 2030. So they're trying to figure out a way of actually recycling the old cars into new cars, so that they don't even have to use new Perfect. material. Uh, so kudos to them Great for doing idea. that. And also, I'm, I'm glad that you can have that that kind of industry, which you know, again, it, it may not be stock cars. It may be not as aimed at sort of you know the the bubbas of the world of the South, but it's still you know, a, a working class uh, approach. And, and that's a good way to communicate that message. You know, we were talking earlier about, it's you know, the, the head of the Teamsters, Sean O'Brien, talking to some of his, his fellow union members on our, on our program and, you know, and, and they're talking about weightlifting and so forth and, you know, this, the, the size of the, the biceps and all that. And to me, this is, this is sort of where we need to go. We need to start communicating that message. Hey, I want to bring in our good friend, uh, John, from Minneapolis. Congratulations go, ahead. To go ahead, Mark. Congratulations to Stoffel Van Dorn, who just won the F1, the Formula One World Championship. So my my good, hero, good, uh, good for Fernando him. Alfonso, <laughs> but, uh, Van um, Dorn is an um, amazing driver. Excellent. John and in, in a, Minnesota, do you have a quick comment for our good friend, Mark, before we rock and roll? No, I'm just envious. I, I bet it's nice and cool. What's the temperature there in Seattle? And is it rainy, sunny? You know, I'm just curious. It's been cloudy You're all day. Man, oh. MTC. Go, go it's been cloudy Mark. all day. Yeah. Just yeah. now starting to come out a little bit. And for just the way the weather has been recently, when the sun goes down, it cools down and it's really pleasant and nice. There you go. Uh, oh, I, I would like nice. that very yeah. much. Oh, wait, it's, don't tell anybody that. It's kind of hot here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> wait, it, I wasn't kind of hot here. here and, it rains and actually, all the time here. I, I don't really like the sun that much, you through. know? And the sun, it's yeah. it's too bright. I kind of like the I know, days, too bright. Actually. Yeah, you gotta, you got to get back to New yeah, York, my friend. Yeah. Hey, Mark. I mean, uh, John, thank you. Yeah. Mark, we got to run as well, my man. Um, <laughs> yeah, you uh, you enjoy yeah. your weekend. You playing? You playing any gigs this weekend? No, I'm in the studio, but check out Democracy Watch News. Where we're recovering pro-democracy movements around the world, and we have a Democracy Cast podcast and also live Twitter Spaces events, so you can follow us there. And also you can check out my music at YouTube, 
So subscribe. Fantastic. And MTC, thank you, my man. Hey, folks, uh, I want to thank uh, all of our guests. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Josh and Freddie producing this broadcast. Keep on fighting. We'll be back uh, on uh, Labor Day or the day after. Until then, my name is Jeff Santos. Right now, my time to say I got to go.